Okay, so let's go back to thinking about green roofs and how they actually affect our buildings. So I'm going to go back over to boot camp and we will think about adding a green roof to our building so far. Now, as you saw in the handouts, the big idea is you're just going to put multiple layers in there. You're going to put additional layers that have some drainage, you're going to put some layers that have some earth, and you have some layers that are going to be some planting material. And it's pretty much the same when we model it in terms of thinking about it oh, both architecture visually and also thinking about it from the building performance standpoint. Because as we put in the layers of the different materials, those layers are going to have a certain R value, they're going to have some radiation values, they're going to have some thermal mass values. So if we just model them as different layers, we actually get a pretty true model of how the green roof is actually going to go through and perform. Okay, so here we are back over there hanging out in our model. If we want to go through and create a green roof in this building, it's actually a fairly straightforward thing. What we're going to do is just take that roof and add some additional layers to it. Let me go through and edit the, type, the normal roof type. You'll see for this is just Oh, kind of a plywood sort of roof with a little uh, kind of a waterproofing membrane above it. And that part's kind of okay. We're sort of doing okay there. But we want to think about adding some additional layers. So for modeling the green roof, let me go ahead and cancel that. I will duplicate it. And I'll say that it's going to be a green roof instead. Now, We'll have to think about structurally whether the wood rafter is going to be enough, whether it's going to have to be steel or concrete, whatever the structural support system is, that's still going to have to come in. We're going to have to worry about that. But let's just go through and think about how the green roof layers affect things. So here's our normal assembly. Our normal assembly is finishing off with this, this uh, waterproofing membrane on the top. We still need that, but now we're ready to go through and start adding some things above that and below that probably. Okay. One thing we're going to do is we're going to add a little bit of drainage layer. Okay, now, in terms of the drainage layer, that's kind of hard. There's not a good Revit material that represents that. I would just go with an air layer to go through and represent that. So if I say that it's going to be a thermal air layer, okay, and I can go through and leave like two inches or whatever you think that distance is going to be, we can find some nice commercial assemblies we would actually find true materials and sort of model what they are, but we're just going to basically put that drainage layer in there. Next up on top of that, we're going to go through and put, oh, there should be some sort of a, what is it, oh, like a, a filter fabric layer. That would typically be considered a membrane layer because it doesn't really have any real thickness. It's just sort of the thickness of the material. On top of that, we typically have this uh, insulating and growing medium. So I'd put that in there. Let me call it, oh, just earth. So let's watch this before we go too far. Notice my R value is 58. My thermal mass is 2 right now. So we're going to add the earth in, and let's see how that changes. So I'm going to say earth. Some nice earth in there. I'll double click that to kind of put it in. OK. If I put in a layer of, for example, six inches of earth, let's put it back to zero again for just a second. OK. Notice thermal mass is 2. Insulate R value is 58. I put in 6 inches, thermal mass is 12. I just increased the thermal mass of my roof by a factor of 6. Okay. Insulation, eh, I did a little bit, but it was almost all the thermal mass. Similarly, if I make it 1 foot, I'm up to a thermal mass of 22. Okay. The R value went out, went out nominally. 
So where you'll really start to see the impact is in terms of the thermal mass. And really that's going to have this nice slowing, buffeting effect. So as the temperature swings, things just don't swing as high. Okay, on top of all that, you do want to put some plants typically. So, oh, let's see if we have anything that look like plants. You might have to create your own material that looks like plants or grass or something like that. I don't have anything in the project. I'm going to double click. I have to open up my little library at the bottom and I'll choose the planting material here. <coughs> Looks like this actually just has an appearance. It doesn't even have much of a thermal property to it. So I don't think it's going to contribute. Let's see if grass did any better. Grass, again, doesn't have any thermal properties. So this is going to be mostly cosmetic. It's just adding it to the top. Oh, what happens is if you're looking at the project materials, there's a little widget right here which opens the library from the bottom. So if you click on that, nice. We can choose some nice material. Ultimately, there's some very nice JPEGs and images that sort of make it look good when we do our rendering. Say OK to that. So, oh, I'm going to say that's like four inches of that. So now I have this thickness, this very thick roof. It has very good thermal mass. I think we're in pretty good shape. It may complain about it, this part right here where the finish is lower than that. Let me see if that's going to complain. Yep. What it wants is there's sort of a hierarchy to how it thinks about this. I'm going to have to call that as opposed to being, well, I could call it thermal air. I could call it substrate. But I have to basically go from higher numbers to lower numbers. Yeah, tell me. Did you change anything in plant, or did you just use what? I just used plant. Oh. Yeah. Harrison, uh, what do you got? I, I hit the tab, and I do a search plant. Yeah. Um, is it make sense to be locked? See it? There's like a, there's a lock on my, my like Let's see. with this beautiful green roof. Let's go ahead and put it on. That gigantic chunk of green roof is up there. All two foot two of it or something like that. It's a pretty thick roof. Yep, two foot two, something like that. If you are putting green roofs on, realize you have to do a little bit of work wherever you have the roof edges. Because you can't just have all that earth kind of hanging out there on the sides and waiting to sort of spill on off the next time the rain comes. So you need to put some sort of edge on that. Tom, what you got? When I got an error box, it said layer function priorities cannot ascend. Let's show you what that's all about. It's this whole thing. I had to go through and actually change the function of what the EDPM was considered to do. It has to actually go from highest numbers to lowest, or actually from lowest to highest. Number one, out to five. It can't go ahead and flip the order. So we have an assembly that will sort of work now. Okay. But always watch out for your green roofs. You typically have some sort of edge. Typically what you have is some sort of a balcony wall or you have some sort of an outer edge of the outer walls that come up because we typically don't have green roofs hanging out like this around the edges. Typically the inner walls come up and wrap around them. So as I think about those green roofs, for example, if I wanted to say that this wall was coming up like a parapet wall, I could choose it and say that it's going to go a few feet above. If it's a green roof and people are going to get up there, I have to have to worry about them being protected so they can't fall off the roof. Okay, so I would want to be the two foot two plus another three feet at least so that I would have some protection so they couldn't accidentally fall off. Treat it like a balcony. So I could say that has to be over oh, like five foot six. So in this sort of case, 
what I would then have to do is edit the footprint and just bring it back. So I don't really want it to go out to there. I just want it to go to the inside. Okay. However, if you also, or if you do want to have a roof that overhangs like that, you have to come up with a nice way of putting an edge on the roof. Again, just to make sure that the, the dirt isn't sort of spilling out. So there's going to be some sort of an edge on that roof. And there's actually a very good tool for doing that. It's under the roof. You have this notion of there being roof soffits and fascias. Fascias are edges that are applied around the outside. Typically, they're very small pieces, only like one foot tall. In our case, we want, we want something that's like three or four feet tall by you know, some great distance. So you can either sort of model that as a wall. For example, I could take that wall and kind of make a little wall that goes around here. Or if you want to think about that as just a roof edge, I could say, let's do a roof fascia. And how this works is there's different sizes. Now, the standard size is 1 by 12. That's determined by a profile. That's 1 by 12. But if I want to make something a little bit bigger, I can. This is very similar to what uh, in the A class we were doing with making new profiles for uh, like uh, rails the other day. If we wanted to go through and make a nice profile, we can say, let's go for some sort of nice uh, fascia profile. Notice there's a 1 by 12. OK, so let's think. If we were going to go through and put a little uh, substantive material, but how many inches thick do you think it might be? Just for the purposes of our model. One inch seems awfully wimpy. So how thick do you think that little wall around the outside might have to be? Three and a half. Three and a half, three and a half again, be sort of thin. But I'll go with three and a half. It could be four and a half, five. It might be, yeah, there's some distance. I'm going to double click it. I'm going to say 3.5 by, how tall do you want it to be? We have to at least cover the two foot two of earth. That we have to cover. So plus however much higher we want to be around there to protect people from falling off. So how high do you think we should make it? Two need two foot two. So three feet? Two foot six? Anywhere in there. Yeah. Okay. Let's go for, we'll go for a little one, like the two foot six, going to keep it low. Then if people were going to get out there, we'd have to put a little railing or something to keep them from going off. <laughs> that's, a, that's an amusing image to you. <laughs> OK. So we'll say 3.5, oops, by two foot six. OK, we are now ready to define a edge, or a piece of fascia. Where am I? Architecture, roof, fascia. I'll take that one. I'll duplicate its type. I'm going to call it the green roof edge. And it's going to be, oh, where did I put that 3 by 5 by 30? Beautiful. So with that, I can say, super, let's put a little bit of fascia on that. You'll see that I didn't do a very good job there, because it's still only 12 inches big. Well, I guess I have to choose the there it is. Green ridge right there. OK, now I can cap that off. Again, the way the fascia tool works is you say roof, you say fascia, and you click right on there. Still have that 12-inch one. She laughs at me. <laughs> OK, we have a little edge on there. 
So if you're doing green roofs, just realize you always need a fascia. Same thing if you are going through and you're having a nice shaft coming up through your green roof because you have a big atrium skylight or something like that. Again, we'll have to put some little walls around the edge of it just to make sure that all the earth isn't kind of like a caving in. Yes? What's a soffit? A soffit is, that's under the roof. Let me draw it this way. It's more for a sloping roof. But it's, it's, I guess all roofs are that way. Usually if I think about a roof sloping down like this, okay, what ends up happening is this piece over here is called the fascia. The soffit is this piece right under there. So if there's something that flattens it out, that's considered the soffit. In a horizontal roof, this is the fascia out there. The soffit is that part. It's that part underneath it. We're often, in addition to the structure, there's a little bit of like a material there, whether it's stucco or wood or something in there, just to kind of give it a decorative finish. Okay. Let us do this. Let us go ahead, take a break right now if we can. If you can't come back in five, when you do come on back, we want to play around with, I'm going to show you what Sapphire is about, but then have you go through and like uh, start thinking about structure. We need to kind of move into that area. But let's go ahead and take our break for five and come on back and we will continue.